In today's video, I'm going to take you through building this Venn diagram behind me. Before we begin, please consider giving a thumbs up or subscribing if my videos help you. This really helps YouTube to identify which videos are helpful for students and go ahead and recommend them to people. All right, so an element is one or more of the same type of atom, where a compound is one or more different types of atoms. So when you look at these two definitions, key words to pick out. Same type of atom, different types of atoms. Types of atoms. Okay, so here are some pictures to represent elements. Elements are always found on the periodic table and you would find at least one capital letter and sometimes also a lowercase letter. But you will see that these dots I'm using to represent atoms, I have the same color dot for each element. So here's the element iron. Here's the element oxygen. Notice oxygen tends to like to bond to itself. And so we've got two of the same type of atom, but it's still an element. Okay. Hydrogen also likes to bond to itself, um, but it's the same type of atom, so it counts as an element. And here we have carbon. So here are some pictures to represent compounds. Again, each color represents a different type of atom. So here we have CH4, which is methane, what we find in farts. Okay. So here we've got one carbon atom, which remember I had represented carbon as green, and I've got four hydrogen atoms. So they're different types of atoms bonded together. Here I have carbon dioxide, one carbon and two oxygen atoms bonded together. Here I've got water, which is going to be, again, one oxygen and two hydrogens. And it's not always just these small compounds, you could have much bigger compounds as well, like in the human body, really, really big compounds. Here's a relatively small one that's found in our body. This is the chemical formula for sugar, a type of sugar called glucose, okay, C6H12O6. I didn't draw that one because it would be really big to draw, but I would have drawn six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygen. Okay, so something they both have in common to put in the middle of our Venn diagram here is that both elements and compounds are made up of atoms. It's just whether it's the same type of atom or different atom. So you understand now how to tell if there's a picture, but what if you were only given the symbols? They're called, these symbols are called chemical formulas, and it's like a recipe telling us what is in a substance. So if there's only maximum one capital letter in the formula, then we are talking about an element, okay? Over here, notice these always have more than one capital letter, a capital C, a capital H, a capital C, a capital O, okay? So if there's more than one capital letter and they're all written squished together, like it's one word, then that tells us it's a compound. Now, it's gonna be really, really important that you pay attention to that because there's some tricky ones. Um, let's look at a tricky one. This, capital C, capital O, that's a compound because there's two. This is the compound poisonous gas that will kill you. This one, capital C, small case O, is the metal cobalt, which is an element. Let's see, there's just one capital letter. You have to really pay attention to how many capital letters are. And be really careful when you're writing elements and compounds that you pay attention to what are the capital letters and what are not the capital letters. Okay, so another thing that you can use to distinguish these is that if you were given the name of something like iron or copper or lithium or sulfur, something you may not be so familiar with, or if you look on the periodic table of elements, you should be able to find the name if it's an element. Okay, there's about 118 different elements and if you're unsure if it's an element, if you're not given a chemical formula, so you can figure it out based on this, then you can look and see if it's on the periodic table. A compound, 
you're not going to find its name on the periodic table. So things like salt or sugar or water, you would not find it on the periodic table of elements because it's a compound. Okay? Um, so if you're just given a name, you'd have to look through all 118 things on the periodic table. Most times teachers will ask you to, to distinguish between an element and a compound either by giving you pictures or by giving you these, these symbols. And you've got to tell from the symbols by counting the capital letters. So another thing that is different or unique between elements and compounds is that all elements, each piece so even if we're talking about something that where there's two elements bonded together, each atom has the same properties. So if we were going to look at an individual atom of oxygen or a bunch of oxygen, it's all going to have the same physical properties and chemical properties. Whereas if we were to look instead at a compound, we would find very, very different properties. Probably one of the best examples of this is table salt. So table salt is made from a soft metal called sodium. And it's a metal that you could literally, you could cut it with a spoon. And if you were to put it in water, it would go and fizz all around. Okay? You wouldn't want to put that on your tongue, right? Chlorine is a yellow-green poisonous gas. You put them together, you make salt. Perfectly healthy, well, relatively healthy to eat, right? It doesn't hurt us. But individually, each element has very different properties than it does as a compound. And so it has, um, the formation of this happens through a chemical change. And each element had its own unique properties, but once they're put together as a compound, they have very different properties. Another great example of this is water. Hydrogen, flammable gas. Oxygen, also flammable. You put it together, you make water, which we use to put out a fire. Okay, so the properties of the compound are very different than the properties of the element. And that's because we went through a chemical change, which means we've created something new with new properties. So the properties of a compound are different than the properties of the element that we originally put into the compound, okay? Like flammable gases, we put them together and we make water, okay? Two things that would hurt us, we put it together, we make salt, okay? So the properties completely different of the individual elements versus the compound, okay? An element, what you see is what you get. It's the same thing throughout, okay? So that's a, a good distinguishing characteristic between elements and compounds as well. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. This really helps with the YouTube algorithm so that other kids can easily find this video. Have a good day.